Welcome everyone to the first conscious pause for the day. Like we mentioned yesterday, our idea behind the concept of punctuating the summit with what we call a conscious pause was to give all of you a chance to be intentional about pausing, intentional about relaxing and resting, if I may, to create the experience of uh, of an elevated pause. Um, and for this, of course, we had uh, Marut speak to you yesterday about the conscious pause on mind and how to inculcate wise compassion. Um, we also had the conscious pause on spirit yesterday, which was led by uh, Vipul Rikhi. Uh, so we covered uh, mental well being and spiritual well being. And today, we have two wonderful, absolutely great facilitators who will be leading the conscious pauses on body and emotions. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Namrita Sudhendra, who will be leading this conscious pause on body and physical well-being. Namrita is a yoga, health and wellness coach. And she's the founder of Nikaya Yoga. Namrita has been a yoga instructor for over 15 years and brings to her students a depth of experience in Hatha, restorative and vinyasa style yoga. Namrita, thank you so much for joining us and over to you. Thank you so much, Tapsi. That was a lovely introduction. I'm so honored to be here, to be able to share with all of you in uh, the midst of this beautiful summit that has uh, been organized. Um, as Tapsi mentioned, I'm a yoga teacher and I have been very drawn to the breath and its deep connection with the body and mind for the last few years. And I've been deep diving into that space. And I'm here to talk to you about that today and help us um, find some tools that we could apply into our everyday lives. They are simple, um, sometimes may appear too simple, but with consistency and practice, they are life altering and changing. Um, what I'm referring to is something that is uh, simple exercises that will help you reduce inflammation in your body. It'll help you improve digestion in your body. It'll help reduce cortisol in our body. We all want that. We live in really stressful environments. Our body is constantly reacting and responding to the environment around us. And this tends to spike our uh, endocrine system and um, all of these exercises that we do will try and regulate that practice. What am I referring to? It's something that you're already doing, right? Except we do it automatically. We do it without thinking about it. I'm talking about our breath. Making friends with the breath changes your life in myriad beautiful uh, life altering ways. Uh, I've been working with many clients over the years and I've seen serious transformations, whether it is with the energy levels that they have uh, for what they need to do in the day. Uh, a lot of us um, multitask, we have multiple uh, jobs that we have to do simultaneously and sometimes find that we maybe don't have enough energy. Incorporating a breath practice into your life can change that tremendously. It'll help you reduce your heart rate variability. It'll bring your heart rate down. It will help you um, manage inflammation in your body. Again, something that is so important at this point as we live through this pandemic and we're so concerned with maintaining our immunity, staying healthy, staying well. Um, there are different ways. The reason the breath is called I refer to it as automatic, is that it is governed by something called the autonomic nervous system. It controls your respiratory system entirely. Um, 
Now imagine a situation where you're trying to cross a road and uh, a car comes at you, right? That reaction that you have, which is to hold yourself in and in, on that inhale, that's the part of the nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system, called the sympathetic nervous system, sorry. That's the part that helps you fight or flight. It, it, it is there to protect you. It helps you to remove yourself from a harmful situation that could cause um, some kind of damage to you, right? This is a very essential part of our nervous system. The, to take it to the flip side, on the other side, uh, imagine yourself at, in your happy place or um, in love or, um, you know, at the end of uh, a successful task, for example. How do you breathe at that point? It is a easy, gentle exhale, like a sigh, right? We release. That part of your uh, nervous system is your parasympathetic nervous system. This is the, the side of the nervous system that you want to work with more. This is the rest and digest side of our nervous system. It sends signals to the body to tell the brain that it's okay to relax that it's okay to heal, to rejuvenate, to recuperate, and all of the good Zen-like uh, qualities that we all want. Now, how do we do this? How do we work with um, our breath in ways that we can stimulate either of these nervous systems? Um, in pranayama, which is an essential limb of yoga, um, or breath practices as it's called, we have three different types of pranayams that we do a balancing pranayam, energizing pranayams, and relaxing pranayams. So depending on your day and what you need at that point of time in your life, you're able to apply the type of pranayama that we need. Um, let's start by just actually doing one of the pranayams and I will walk us through what the benefits of it and why do we do what we do. Uh, we'll start with a balancing pranayam. Um, this is the most frequently used pranayam that you can apply into your life. Um, it's if you had to compare it to something um, that we consume or in life in general, it, it's kind of like how we use water in our life. It is more frequently through the day. It is used to soothe and calm. It, um, it's a practice which is in that space. So you can use this at your convenience if you're feeling too riled up, it'll bring you down. If you're feeling really low, it'll bring you up, essentially bringing that balance within the body and the mind. It's a simple practice. I encourage you to just sit comfortably in your chair, close your eyes, and just relax and release any tension that you might be holding, whether it's in your shoulders, your neck. Just let all of that go and bring your awareness to your breath. It's a simple breath practice where we will inhale for four, exhale for four. Don't worry about the count, I will do that for us. You're just going to focus on your breath and inhaling and exhaling, right? Starting all together, inhale one, two, three, four, exhale four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one. Continue with the breath, stay with that count while I walk us through what we actually did. So with 
water breathing as we call it or a balancing breath what we're trying to do is take the number of breaths that we do in a minute and bring that volume down so it's down to about four to six breaths in a minute you can do this practice like I said, any time during the day, whether it is before the start of a really big presentation, you're feeling the nerves, whether it is um, a really stressful situation and you're trying to unwind, whether it is um, at a time where you need focus and centering. It's a great practice that helps you bring yourself to the center and then from that place where you've stimulated your parasympathetic nervous system and your body is a lot calmer, you can begin to operate from there. The, as um, a prescription to the practice, you can do this for three to five minutes uh, anytime during the day. Also, something to remember is that we inhale and exhale through the nose. Now, if that is a bit difficult, um, then try to definitely inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. But ideally, you want to work yourself up into inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Moving to our second practice that I want to talk to you about today. This is the more relaxing pranayam that we do. Um, if I had to compare this in an analogy, would be it would be like whiskey or wine in um, our lives, right? It's taken in small doses, um, more than uh, likely at night as sort of like a nightcap or something to help you unwind and de-stress and release your day. Um, we do it in smaller quantities. We do not recommend that you do this very often. This is a deeper stimulation of your parasympathetic nervous system, which will help you in getting better sleep. So this is something that can be used as a great sleep aid. Again, before we go into the details of it, I would like us to practice it together. We'll do a slightly longer version of this. In this practice, we inhale at the count of four and we exhale to the count of eight, essentially drawing out the exhale and allowing the body to go into a deeper state of relaxation. Again, closing your eyes, leaning back into your chair, Staying very comfortable and easy. I will walk us through the counts. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, Four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one inhale one two three four exhale eight seven six five four three two one inhale one two three four exhale eight seven six five four, three, two, one, and gently release that breath and just stay with whatever the feelings are within. 
Paying attention to our inner world is just as important as we learn all of these exercises. Taking that conscious pause to connect internally, to connect to the workings of our inner world. And all of these practices are really great when it comes to that. And it's a nice stepping stone to bring you towards a meditation practice, which, um, as Dr. Rao was mentioning as well, is so crucial and life altering. Right now, what happens with the whiskey breath and how to use it? Uh, with this relaxing pranayam that we did, it is at the capacity of inhale four, exhale eight. Um, great practice to do at the end of your day. It's also something that you could do in bed before you go to sleep. Lying down, you start by counting to an inhale of four, exhaling to eight. You could do 10 rounds of this, or you can continue to do it until you drift off asleep. Um, ideally not recommended to do um, just randomly through the day, I would say, unless you're having a very, very stressful um, situation that you're handling and you feel like uh, a little bit of relaxation could help you, then do 10 rounds and stop. But as a sleep aid, you can take it all the way through till you drift asleep. The third practice that I want to talk to you about is the energizing pranayama. Um, if we had to compare it to something in our day that gives us energy, coffee, right? So like um, if you had to call it that, coffee breathing. Um, this is something that we use with caution. Because if you overdo the energizing pranayam, it can leave you in a very frenzied, hyper state. So uh, if you were going to use this practice, um, I will like, tell you after we've done the practice, the four situations in which you can apply this and it will be really useful in your life. Um, in the energizing practice, we don't focus on the exhale. What we're trying to do is actually stimulate a little bit more into the sympathetic nervous system state. And we're focusing on the exhale. It looks and sounds a bit like this, right? You take in full inhale and then, right? It sounds a bit funny and it's a, um, especially if you don't have a regular yoga practice already and already are familiar with Kapalabhati, it can feel a bit uh, uncomfortable and maybe uh, a little amusing, but and it's something that will benefit you in the long run by applying it into your life when it makes sense. So we'll start it and we're only going to do 20 rounds. I'll count us through it. So again, eyes closed, relax, take a full inhale and begin to Exhale, 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 and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release. Just paying attention to the breath. You'll notice that when you release Kapalabhati or this energizing practice, a full effortless inhale comes in very naturally. This is essentially the capacity at which you want to breathe. And that's the kind of capacity you're also looking at for your balancing breath. It becomes easier with practice like everything else. You're just training your muscles and it will get stronger. Let's try one more round of the energizing pranayam. All together, three, two, one. Exhale, 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 ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release. Stay with that breath. Enjoy that free flow of inhale into your body. Make sure to exhale completely as well. So it sets you up for that next nice full inhale. Excellent. We're going to do one last round of it. Starting together. Three, two, one. 
Exhale, 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 ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release the breath. Let it come back into its natural rhythm, into its natural flow. Don't try and manipulate that breath anymore. Instead, just stay with whatever the sensations that it brings up. Now with the energizing pranayam, it's a wonderful practice to do first thing in the morning. It gives you that little boost of energy that you need. It's great to do before your workout, whatever that might be. If you are a yoga practitioner, chances are your classes will begin with Kapalabhati. Um, another great time to apply um, this practice is around the three o'clock, um, 3.30, depending on where, what time you eat. It's when we tend to reach for a snack. It's when we normally have slumped post meal and we're feeling a bit lethargic and we tend to reach for something sugary. Next time, instead of that, try this practice. You're just doing three rounds of 20 sharp, short exhales only through the nose and releasing. And maybe you won't need that sugary um, snack and maybe you'll reach for water instead. These are wonderful practices that I use in my life constantly, consistently. Uh, the key to uh, having it have as deep an impact as we would all want is to be consistent with the practice. Like I've shown it to you, it's not anything too complex. They're not advanced pranayams, but they are simple enough to give you the benefits of pranayam. Do it three times a day. And the, a simple routine of doing this three times a day could be you wake up in the morning and you do the energizing pranayam, which is the short, sharp exhales, 20 rounds, three times. That's your first morning energizing practice. It's when you want to start your day on a really positive note, full of energy, full of vibrancy, right? The second practice you could do midway through your day, the balancing pranayam. If you've had a really stressful morning, it will bring you down. If you feel like you've perhaps had a bit of a slump, it'll bring you up. And this will help you balance your energy out as you've reached the midpoint of your day and help you take you through the rest of it. The third practice that we did, which is the relaxing pranayam at the end of your day. At maybe even just before you go to bed. This is again up to you to use how you'd like. It's a great way to let your day go, to allow your nervous system to switch into the parasympathetic state, to allow for your body to rest, repair, digest, relax, all of the good things that we need to help us start afresh the next morning. I hope that this is something that you can apply into your life. I hope that you can take control of your breath, understand and make friends with your breath, which in turn will change the way your body functions. It will change the way your mind feels and it'll give you some control on your nervous system and leave you feeling more centered, calm and balanced. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Namrata, for um, making this such a special space for the half an hour that we had together. Uh, thank you for introducing us to the three kinds of pranayam, but more importantly, I think for breaking down the nuances of each, uh, scientifically and spiritually. And I love that you shared when these can best be done, each, each of them. Um, I think breath is something we all do all the time without paying much attention to it. So thank you for bringing it front and center. Uh, we just had uh, one question, Namrita. Um, can you help us understand how breath uh, work? Uh, we all know that pranayam and asanas go together. But can you also help us understand maybe more scientifically how breath work weaves into the practice of yoga? Uh, into the physical practice of yoga? Yes, yes. Uh, 
So what that does, and which is why it's a mind-body practice, is there is a, in the Yoga Sutras, it's one of the few Yoga Sutras that refers to asana. It's called Thiram Sukham Asana. It's finding that uh, balance, centered and grounded feeling in a yoga posture, which means that you can land up holding it for an extended period of time without feeling the stress or the uh, strain of that pose. And the reason, the, the method to obtaining Stiram Sukham Asanam is the breath, is the yoking of your movement to your breath. So the more you practice it and the more control you gain over how you can manipulate your breath, how deeply you can breathe in and how, you know, fully you can breathe out, again, does the similar thing that I was talking about is that it brings you into your parasympathetic state, which then allows your body to relax into that pose and allows you to stay in it in a very stable, uh, steady state, which is what Stiram Sukham uh, translates to. And uh, that is something that you should absolutely be uh, very mindful of if you are a yoga practitioner is that you are yoking your breath with your movement. And initially it is a difficult process, but with practice and consistency, it is life altering. Thank you so much, Namrita. That's very insightful because we do have, I think, a lot of um, community members who definitely practice yoga, but uh, integrating breath into it is so important and you you thrown such a beautiful light on this practice today. Once again, thank you so much for your time. We are deeply grateful. Thank you so much.